All right, so uh, next is Corpus Christi. This was uh, kind of a joint project with us, the Rice Creek Watershed District, and uh, the church. Uh, this was, uh, this is considered phase two of kind of doing projects in that area of Roseville off of uh, Fairview Avenue. Um, as Mark mentioned in the um, meeting, our Fairview trunk system is uh, overtaxed and it can basically handle you know, about the five year uh, rain event when most of the time we try to get the 10 year in the pipe. So it's a little undersized. So what we try to do is we try to, you know, if we can't remove the volume through infiltration or reuse like at um, Upper Villa, we do more uh, filtration. So we did a study back in 2011, which basically uh, identified that we need to capture about 13 acre feet of water. Um, to basically get the system to manage a little bit more regularly instead of uh, flooding out that 36 intersection um, underneath the bridge and then um, you know just kind of poor drainage in some of the city streets just because uh, the water can't get off the street fast enough into our system. Um, so when we get out there you'll be able to it'll look uh, much different um, but the kind of the upper left photo was the before um, I don't know if any of you saw Corpus Christi before um, today or really paid attention to it, but uh, it used to be a big field, kind of sloped all from the church all the way down to Fairview. And what we did is we uh, worked with them to put in uh, these big filtration basins. So what we are trying to do is this area is historically a wetland. Oddly enough, Roseville has a wetland in it. A lot of sump pumps run a lot of the time because there's just a lot of excess groundwater in the area and it's uh, rather high. So what we hope to do with this is one, provide this filtration basin to kind of get some of the storm water from running, running overland. But at the same point, we actually try to tap into that groundwater a little bit, maybe uh, lower it just past uh, the floor of a lot of the basements. But unfortunately, uh, this basin was dug in some areas about 10 feet deep and we hit nothing but fill from uh, where we started digging down to the bottom. So that means we could have went, say another 12, 10 feet and we potentially still wouldn't have hit a lot of, uh, you know, kind of the groundwater. So we kind of had to stop it there, but um, this entire system will handle the 10 year rain event. So that's 4.2 inches of rain over like a 24 hour period. So the main purpose of this system is to actually slow down a lot of the water instead of just letting it go straight into the storm sewer, um, into our system, uh, we actually add about half hour worth of lag time to it. So any water that lands on this is actually slowed down for approximately 30 minutes. And then it's kind of slowly released into our system, which um, it'll have a nice effect to kind of help reduce some of the flooding that's around uh, that 36 area. And then one of the good things about the project too is all the soil that we took out on site, we uh, used, and you'll be able to see when we get out there, we created a multi-purpose field for the church um, because they wanted to have a place where some kids could play up in the front that was a little bit flatter and then also be able to have, uh, um, to be able to congregate out there. So this was a really good spot for us because that saved us 2,000 yards of uh, having to ship off soil which is a pretty big cost when we're you know, looking at the overall expense of the project. Um, so by being able to keep this all on site, we actually got to make the, make the project a little bit bigger because it helped expand our budget. And um, within the basin itself, uh, you can kind of see the photo. Uh, we have some drain tile surrounded by rock uh, and we have uh, about three feet of sand on top of that. And that's just kind of there to help make sure the system does dry out instead of becoming another pond. Um, because what we want to do with this too is we'll also have, um, this is all seeded with a native seed mix, um, appropriate with kind of for how much it's going to be inundated with water. Um, but then at the same point, we're also looking at adding in some additional plantings, uh, potentially to kind of help with pollinators, you know, try to get some more monarchs in there, get some more uh, bees, um, just trying to do a lot of, you know, say uh, butterfly milkweeds and things like that added to kind of add a little bit more uh, diversity to the area since there isn't a lot of uh, natural plantings around there other than uh, you know as natural as turf grass is. So this will be a really nice addition um, in the next couple years when it starts filling in. Um, you'll start to see uh, a lot more growth 
and the church also wants to use it, you know, with it being kind of hopefully a pollinator, be able to bring a lot of the kids out there, show them how hydrology works, um, and then also be able to show them, you know, what kind of these native plants do, kind of show them a little bit different ecosystem. And then uh, lastly, just to kind of bring up for this so far, uh, the bottom right photo was completely for Dwayne. Um, because we kind of hear it a lot where, you know, once it gets, uh, once contractors see a snowflake, they say they can't do any kind of uh, temporary seeding or mulching. So we have a photo of a contractor out there. I swear it was about 34 degrees when he was doing it. So it was the last leg for him to kind of get this stabilized before we got into uh, winter. But contractor did a great job. Um, they were great to work with. The church was great to work with. Um, and as always, so was the watershed. Um, but all in all, this is a really good project. And like I said, it's like this was phase two. So out of our goal for uh, you know having to manage 13 acre feet of water uh, between our two projects right now, we have uh, just about an acre foot of storage. So we have to find uh, another 12 acre feet of storage out there. So you know just kind of keep that in mind when you look at the size of this site and how much area that you know we tried to take up in you know kind of a a nice managed landscape sort of a way to try to fit it in without making just this huge hole in the ground. Um, you know, that only takes care of basically, you know, one thirteenth of what we need just in this one section of Roseville. Um, so yeah, and since Dwayne brought that up, when we do get out there too, we'll be able to see uh, Evergreen Park where we were looking at doing the other reuse system. And footprint wise, it would be a much smaller than the one we were just at. Basically just because we knew we couldn't infiltrate um, the demand for water for watering those fields wasn't as high as uh, Beedale, even though there's four fields. Uh, the heavier soils also keep a little bit more moisture up available for the turf grass. Um, but yeah, it's like the project that will drive by Evergreen, um, while Beedale was a million dollar project, Evergreen, when we got the bids in, came in at 600000 So just kind of the, you know, the scale of things where that one took out uh, 80,000 cubic feet. This one would have taken out 15,000. So your cost per, you know, removal is uh, really, uh, really good at Upper Villa, and it's it's good here because it would help help with you know one being able to reuse some of the water, but then also taking some of the water out of the storm sewer system. So it's it's beneficial to have it, but when we're kind of looking at it, you know, uh, scale of projects, this one you know just doesn't come out as good as uh, Upper Villa. So this is the basin that's uh, we ended up over excavating a lot. There's three feet of an amended soil below, like where you can see. Uh, and basically underneath that, you can see that we have some drain tile cleanouts. So drain tile is there to kind of help draw this down when we do have some water in it, uh, because we know we can't get any infiltration. So that helps carry it over, which goes into our structure, which then goes uh, to our main line in the street. While, while we're standing here, you're, you're going to see a lot of these basins, not to this scale, but as you know, as you drive around Roseville and all other communities now, you see more and more basins like this. There's just these depressions, you know, with with turf or plantings and things like that. You know, some of them are, you know, rain gardens uh, and such. But I wanted to point out the difference between this and a, and a traditional pond. You know, you, you might look at this and say, oh, well, this is a pond, you know, that's going to fill up with water. And the difference between between a pond is you know a pond is designed to hold water and then that water is kind of treated just by sitting there over time the sediment falls out and some of the um, pollutants are supposed to you know kind of evaporate out and things like that it's supposed to um, and so the way the ponds work is the water sits in there and as the water goes up when a rain event the water goes up it bounces up and then it overflows into the stormwater system but there's always water in the pond with a basin like this you know, either it's a filtration basin where we where the soils don't work for uh, infiltration, so the the water isn't going to seep all the way into the ground. That's infiltration, so the water actually goes away. That's what we. That's the ideal scenario is to have an infiltration system, and that was what we saw at Upper Villa. We had good sands there, were uh, soils, and so the water is going to seep into the ground, and that goes away. It doesn't ever get into our system. With this, because the soils aren't conducive to infiltration. 
This is a filtration basin, so the water filtrates through the soil and the medium that we put in here, and it's, it's special soil and rock and that to help leach out some of those um, pollutants in that and the phosphorus in that, um, hopefully. And then, it, like Ryan said, it, it seeps down to the drain tile pipes that these are the cleanouts for, and then it goes into those drain tile pipes and ultimately gets into the storm sewer, sewer system there and then flows down Fairview. So we don't get rid of the water, we just hold it for a little while. It's in here, it seeps through, it's that, that's what we call the rate control. So we're slowing the water down from getting in the system and hopefully doing some treatment. So that's that difference between a pond that's holding the water, a filtration basin that's just doing the rate control, and an infiltration basin where the water goes away and we don't have to deal with it anymore. So yes, safety is our key here. Um, so yeah, this will be nice and dry uh, after about 24 to 48 hours at the longest uh, with our drain tiles. It'll probably take closer to, you know, eight to 12, just the way with everything's hooked up. Um, but yeah, once, all this is said and done, this is gonna grow. Uh, the contractor's actually gonna come back uh, in the next few months and they're gonna go through and they're gonna kind of um, hardly rake the top, basically get it nice and smooth. So that'll look like a really nice ball field when everything is said and done. And then this will get touched up too. Um, so this will be a nice complete project, you know, by the middle of summer. So it should look very uh, different now. Yep, so yeah, it's like all the seed that you can uh, kind of see on the ground, kind of a mix of native seed and it's also uh, some cover cover crop. So like oats that comes up really quick. So everything that's green right now is kind of a instant stabilization because we want to get this thing uh, stable as you know, fast as we can. So we don't get, when we do get our rains in May and June and Dwayne and I start freaking out, um, you know, this is nice and uh, protected from eroding. Yeah, because we don't want to make sure that any sediment of our project so we don't get any plugging. We want this thing to work as uh, well as it can. And then yeah, once all this seed kind of germinates and get going, we'll have uh, hopefully a nice little prairie here in the next few years. So yeah, basically this whole system is kind of tied all the way up this southern edge. So all the water from the church, school, some of the fields behind it, all drained down through this uh, swale that has a couple of depressions in it too. Uh, similar to this one, but just a lot smaller. All this water will come up into here. So yeah, there'll be a little bit of water in here and kind of our typical rainfalls. But if we get kind of that big deluge where we have, you know, a couple inches in an hour, this thing will have a, a lot of water in it, which is exactly what we designed it to do. All right, so maintenance of the wet pond over there has probably been about nothing. <laughs> so the fact that we are even talking about maintenance here is a plus. Um, so it's gonna have a couple of different maintenance uh, regimes to it. Uh, anything that's turf grass will obviously get mowed, uh, you know, weekly, every couple weeks. Um, but the prairie grass that's here will probably do uh, an annual mowing or every uh, twice a year until it starts establishing. Um, Cause then once we have a nice actual uh, maintainable prairie here, it's, we can basically mow it once a year just to kind of help clean it up since it is a very public visible area. That'll kind of keep hopefully keep some of the comments uh, a little bit quieter so Mark doesn't get them. That's about it. Yeah.